All right, this video is going to be dedicated to interpreting graphs of f and f prime. And actually, we could add f double prime to that list. But usually, we're going to focus on f and f prime, and most of those times, actually, f prime. It's very likely that on your AP exam, you will be given a graph of f prime and asked to um, answer questions about either the function f or the second derivative, f double prime. Um, and so we create this little like three level system where we've got the function, it's, it's first derivative and it's second derivative and we're looking at a picture of the middle level and we're trying to answer questions about the other levels and it's, um, it can get quite confusing at times and there are some things we can memorize. Um, some of us are formula people we want to memorize but um, I want to encourage you to try to understand where those came from so that you can really understand what the questions are asking and um, answer them properly. So let's start with a picture of f. It's important to know we're looking at a picture of the function. And my first question is where is f double prime of x less than zero? So where the second derivative is less than zero? And the big fact that they're testing us here is do we know what it means for a second derivative to be negative? And that means our function would be concave down. Again, because I'm looking at a picture of f, I know it's going to be concave down just by looking at its, at its um, picture. So it's concave down from negative 7 to negative 6 up here. And so I'm just going to list open intervals, negative 7 to negative 6. I have a negative second derivative because my function's concave down. It's concave down from negative 3. Oh, excuse me. No, it stays concave up there. It's concave up down here it, stay, it turns concave down at 0 and it stays that way until 2 and then it goes concave up for a little bit then it goes concave down from 4 to 6. So that's kind of a basic level question where I give you a picture and ask you where it's concave down but I don't say the words concave down I say f double prime is less than 0. Alright so my next question is where is f prime undefined. Where's the derivative undefined? And there are a few things that, that can make this happen. We have vertical tangent and that's going to happen at negative 6. So I tried to draw here a vertical tangent. I don't know if I quite got vertical but I meant to. So a vertical tangent line, a sharp point, and the thing about these two types is the function is defined um, but the derivative is undefined. We could also have um, vertical asymptotes, but I don't have any in this particular example. But those are things you should look out for. This, this type of question usually doesn't include asymptotes because we're, we're worried about places mostly where the function is defined um, and the derivative is undefined. So that for us is a vertical tangent because you know a slope can't be vertical and be defined and a sharp point because the derivative coming in the slope coming in from the left would have to match the slope coming in from the right and there's no tangent line at a sharp point. So my final question about this graph of f of x is where is f prime of x less than zero? So f prime is the derivative, it tells us the slope, excuse me I said less than, I meant to say greater than. Where f prime is greater than zero, that's when my slope is positive or my function is increasing. So I want to list the intervals where this function is increasing. So it increases from negative 5 to negative 3, right through here. Then it decreases for a little while. Then it increases from negative 1 to 1. And I'm just giving the x-coordinates of these open intervals. And it increases from 3 to 5. So we could follow up with questions about relative extrema. Um, but we're not going to get too in-depth on this graph of f. We want to focus most of our time on a graph of f prime. But there's three examples of questions that could be asked based on looking at a graph of a function. All right, so here's where we really get into what the AP um, test might ask you. You've got a picture of f prime. We're looking at the derivative of f, and we have to make conclusions about the function based on looking at this picture. So let's start with... Where does f of x have a relative max? So think about where relative maxes happen. They're at the peaks and valleys. This is not the answer to question one. Negative five, zero, and five, okay? This is where f prime has a relative max. I wanna know where f has a relative max. 
So f has a relative max when the function goes from increasing to decreasing. A function goes from increasing to decreasing when its derivative goes from positive to negative. Kind of visualize your sign charts in the number line. My relative max values are going to happen at 2 and at 7. Think about why. Okay, this is where it starts to get a little fuzzy. You've got, um, you're looking at the middle level. I'm asking you about the derivative or the, the function level. When your derivative changes from plus to minus, you have a relative max. And plus to minus on this picture is above and below the x-axis. All right, and we'll sum up all these rules on the next slide. I just want to think about a few. Um, actually, I would encourage you to pause and answer two and three before I tell you those answers and um, give those a shot. So the next one is where is f of x concave up? All right, a function is concave up when its second derivative is positive. The second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. So when that thing is positive, it's because f prime of x is increasing. Two levels of differentiation going on. All right, concave up is when this green line is increasing. My function is concave up because my slope is increasing, and that happens from negative 7 to negative 5, and it happens from negative 3 to 0, all right, increasing, all right, going up. This is going down from negative 5 to negative 3, going up again here, going up again here from 3 to 5. So all of those um, intervals, my function is concave up because my first derivative is increasing, which means my second derivative is positive. Okay? Inflection points. Inflection points are changes in concavity. And we just talked about how the concavity um, is it's up when this thing's on its way up, and it's going to be down when this thing's on its way down. So in general, a relative extreme extremum on f prime is an inflection point on f double prime, all right? I'm going to have inflection points here because my concavity changes. Concave up, concave down. I'm going to have an inflection point here and here and here and here. It doesn't matter that my first derivative, that my, um, that my Second derivative is undefined here because my first derivative is sharp. It's still a relative max. It's still a change in concavity. So negative 5, negative 3, 0, 3, and 5 are all going to be inflection points because f prime changed from increasing to decreasing, which means f double prime changed from concave up to down or vice versa. All right, so for our, our, our memory people or the memory side of our brain, where we just like to have rules to follow. Um, again, I want you to understand why these rules are the way they are, but sometimes it's just good to have a checklist. When you're looking at f prime, it's very important that you know what you're looking at. Your function is going to be increasing when f prime of x is above the x-axis. I don't want to get it all out in words. I don't want to use any qualities for our checklist of rules. If this picture is on top of the graph, your function is, is increasing and when it's below the x-axis, your function is decreasing, which means your relative mins and maxes should happen when your function is touching the x-axis. A relative max happens when the graph has an x-intercept and changes from plus to minus. In other words, a relative max is going to happen when your graph of f prime is going like this. A relative min is going to happen at an x-intercept where f prime changes from minus to plus. In other words, 
a relative min happens at this point. Whenever this line is below the graph, our function's decreasing. Whenever it gets to above the graph, our function's increasing, and that, that change creates a relative min. All right, concave up. We just talked about this on the last slide. When you're looking at f prime, your function is concave up when f prime is increasing. That means your function's concave down when your graph is decreasing. Inflection points happen when concavity changes. So that's going to happen when your graph changes. Increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. Forgive my abbreviations. This is going to happen at relative extrema. A relative min or max on a graph of f prime is an inflection point on f. All right, so some combination of these questions is very likely to be a part of your AP exam. So this is kind of our memory checklist. We're going to memorize steps and have these rules to fall back on. But again, looking at a picture, hopefully you can figure out these rules by looking at it and thinking about the relationship between a function and its derivative and its second derivative and the pictures of all of those items.